I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Vesey. Today we have somebody very important on the podcast to talk about uh, an area that nobody wants to think about, but is really, really <laughs> important, which is insurance. So we have Ashlyn Haddon of Ashlyn Haddon Insurance, the owner of Ashlyn Haddon Insurance, as you guessed from the name, on the podcast to talk about this uh, very important topic with us. So welcome to the show, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll try not to bore everybody to sleep with the talks of insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. Well, uh, having talked to you a little bit, uh, I know that you're, you're far from boring. You're, you're very straight down the line person, which is great because <laughs> we, we need that in insurance, right? So right. Uh, the first question that I always ask all the guests, and if, if long-term listeners may be tired of me asking, but I just can't think of a better, more important thing than to tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be providing uh, insurance for Amazon sellers, because obviously yeah. that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So I started um, as a captive agent with a company called Liberty Mutual several, several years ago. And all I did was auto home, life insurance, a little bit of commercial. Um, but I only had one product. I could sell Liberty and only Liberty. So a couple of years ago, I decided that I was tired of only having one product and one choice and decided to open my own agency. So now I've got 30 different carriers and I've got 30 different companies I can go to and I am able to offer my customers more opportunities. Um, and one of my customers about two years ago needed some insurance for his Amazon business. And he said, hey, Ashlyn, Amazon's come out with some new rules and they need me to have a general liability policy. Can you help me? And I was like, uh, uh, no way <laughs> you guys, nobody knows what you do. Nobody likes you guys. Like the carriers just didn't want to work with you guys. So I told him I wouldn't help him. Um, and he's like, you know, come on, Ashlyn, I really need some help. So a couple of months went down and I was able to kind of, uh, get a relationship with the carrier and really explain what you guys are doing. Um, the big problem in insurance is no one knows what you guys do. No one knows your lingo. No one knows, you know, they think you're going and buying stuff at garage sales and putting used products up and things like that. So I was really just educating the carriers on what you guys do. And I was able to get him insured. And then he ran a Facebook group and was able to kind of um, expand in that Facebook group. So about the last 15 months, I've been really focusing on e-commerce sellers um, and just kind of drilling down what you guys need and, and proving to these insurance carriers that you guys really are good risks for us to have. Um, so yeah, I spent the last 15 months or so in your crazy world and I love it and I would never go back to the other, to the independent side. So. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you, you're doing the right thing. You're flattering your target market already. So you're obviously a smart lady. I can see why you've uh, done so well <laughs> in business. So um, tell us a little bit about that then. So what needs specifically did your friend come up with initially yeah. that you go into? What's the thing that was required? Yeah. So back in the day um, when I first kind of got started, Amazon was required just a general liability policy if you had three months of $10,000 or sales or more. They've recently changed that. Now their rule is any pro seller must have a million dollar general liability policy with products completed. So what that means for you guys as a seller is that you need a policy that has general liability and product liability, no matter if you are private label, wholesale or retail arbitrage, you've got to have a policy. Um, and it's super, super cheap. Um, a lot of people are like, well, I can't afford a policy. It's, it's not something that I can do, but it really is inexpensive. Um, if you're a fairly new seller and you're just doing retail arbitrage, you're looking at about $500 a year. So it's not like it's four or five, six thousand dollars to have a policy. It's really, really inexpensive, and it's part of your terms of service. If you don't have it, Amazon could suspend you. They could take you off the platform. So it's a very cheap um, policy to make sure you're protected. Excellent. Well, thank you for clarifying that. I mean, first of all, in my ignorance, I, I hadn't spotted that Amazon had changed the terms of service recently to, you know, to include it for anyone uh, who's got a pro, pro seller account. Pro so that's yeah. pretty much most people that are listening, I think. So, um, yeah, it, that's a pretty significant news. So, and, and also that figure, as you say, you know, some, we, you know I, like a lot of people when I started out, um, I was trying to bootstrap and I was thinking, oh, I don't need insurance yet because at that point you only had the $10,000 you know, thing to jump through. So I thought, well, I'm going to leave that. Presumably it's going to cost thousands of dollars. So it's reassuring to hear right. it can be affordable. <laughs> um, it 
So given that we have to have it from Amazon and that we're risking suspension, if not, I guess we're going to have to do it. So that kind of simplifies the question. Of, should I do it? <laughs> right. So then the, the immediate question is when we talk about general liability. So can you explain? There's a couple of questions, but the first one is what is general liability about? And is that separate from product liability? Yeah. So your general liability is going to be anything you do or say as a business that could harm somebody. Your product liability is anything your product could do to harm somebody. And there's a bunch of different ways to, to explain harm. Um, one thing that you could say, let's, let's say that you sell um, a calculator and then the, somebody's using the calculator and the calculator catches on fire and burns somebody's house down. Okay. That is you're damaging that person's personal property. Or you can have that calculator explode in their face and damage their physical body. So it doesn't matter what, what your product does, is if it hurts somebody or somebody's personal property, it's covered under the policy. And then your general liability um, is gonna be anything else that's not really included under your product liability. So someone trips and falls, someone says that you slandered them, they stole, you stole their business intellectual property, any of that other kind of stuff that you do as a business would be covered under your general liability. Okay, interesting. So I suppose in my ignorance of these things, this is why we need experts like you on the show. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, it's presumably all the same thing. But as soon as you said that, I thought, okay, I can see the difference there. I mean, so an intellectual property um, issue is separate from the product, I suppose, in a sense. Right. All right. So right. product liability is when a product hurts somebody and general liability is everything else. Right. Is that the simple way? Yeah. Okay. We could go into great nuts and bolts, but I guess the, the thing is that we have had CJ on recently. I know you know CJ. In fact, I yep. first spoke to you when you were in his offices. So um, if we wanted to get into the nitty gritty of it, I guess that's when we call a lawyer. But when it comes to right. insurance, um, a couple of questions then. One very simple, and, and I hope you forgive this question, but um, if we've got to have it, then we kind of don't need to think too much about that. <laughs> we right. just got to do it. So then the question becomes, what is it that your company does that's different from other insurers? Or, or in fact, another question yeah. is perhaps, do other insurers even cover that? Will they even cover an Amazon seller? So there's, like I said, it took me a long time to get a company to even look at you guys. So yes, there are other brokers out there that are doing it if they know where to go to get it. So um, I'm not, I hate to say I'm a diamond in a rough, but there's not a lot of people out there that know what you guys are doing and how to class you and really what coverages that you actually need. So if they've been in your realm, maybe they know a little bit, but then they've got to know what companies to go to to get you insured. So um, I've, like I said, I've got 30 different companies, but there's only about two or three that actually know what you guys are doing and are comfortable insuring an e-commerce seller. So it's just, it's tough right now because they're just, they're scared because they don't know what you guys really do. Okay, that makes sense. Because if you if you don't understand something, you can't assess the risks. And if you can't assess the risks, I guess you can't know how much premium to take in versus the probability right. of paying out. That, that makes sense. Yep. Okay, yep. so um, I guess then in a way, you are the no-brainer solution to anyone who needs general <laughs> liability insurance, right? Right. Okay. I mean, the thing is, I get quite, quite a few guests on who sell, you know, great tools or an answer to a problem and people have several different choices. As I understand it, there, there isn't really much choice when it comes to insurance. There's not much choices. <laughs> okay. Well, that kind of makes that a quick conversation really, because I don't have to yep. get too complicated about like, well, well, you offer general liability insurance for Amazon sellers. Right. Amazon requires it of us as sellers. Therefore, we kind of have to come to you. So I guess that takes care of that conversation, right. <laughs> which is good to know that you exist. So I mean, the first thing I'll say, which is a bit early in the show to say this normally, but it's if you want to check out the insurance that Ashlyn offers, get yourself over to amazingfba.com forward slash Ashlyn, A-S-H-L-I-N for November. And uh, we'll have more details there. We'll put a link through and so forth. But so that's the general liability side. So now does Amazon yep. require us to have product liability? Yes. <clears throat> so it's it's one policy, the general liability and product liability, and it's a million dollar aggregate policy. So I, we do them hand in hand. Once you apply for the general liability, we automatically add that product liability on there for you. Got you. Okay. So we don't have to think yep. about that. That's great. Nope. <laughs> Not nope, having I do that to think about you. insurance is good. <laughs> right. We like and this already. They they um, require some the certificate of insurance to be sent to them and there's verbiage on there. I take care of all of that stuff for you guys. So once you buy the policy, I send them the required information. So it's uploaded onto your seller central. So there's no questions. If there's anything, they can get in there and look at it. And then 
I do that every single year moving forward. So they always have an updated copy on file for you guys. So you really get to sit back and relax and just know that you're protected and that you don't have to do anything else with the insurance. I take care of the rest of it. That's brilliant because I have to say something like insurance. For example, I once got pulled over by the police in the UK, which is very embarrassing <laughs> because my MOT, which is a thing we have to have in the UK, it's a sort of certificate to say your car is roadworthy, mm -hmm. had run out. And it's not because I was trying to defraud anyone. I'd just forgotten. So right. anniversaries of insurance, uh, yep. if you take care of that, um, you know, that's that already makes me <laughs> so much happier. So this is all good news. So tell us a little bit about the, the financial side of it. Obviously, I realize that each person is going to be somewhat different, but let's give us an idea of the <clears throat> sorts of money you need to be putting aside. So you have a million dollars yeah. worth of liability should you be whatever sued or something horrible happen. Uh, um, is there a relate? How does the premium get worked out? The money that we pay to the insurance person? Yeah. So it really depends on a lot of factors. We look at what your sales numbers are. We look at where you're from. We look at what you're selling and then how you're selling it. If you're selling at retail arbitrage or if you're selling wholesale or private label, um, retail arbitrage is really the cheaper one uh, between retail arbitrage and wholesale. If you're private label, um, you, that's more expensive because you're really the one that's solely responsible if it gets harmed. Um, so we look at those and then we kind of look at how long you've been in business. Um, and then if you've had any past claims, so you can look between a policy between $500 a year to someone who's like manufacturing pocket knives at like $6,000 a year. So it really depends on what you're selling, um, and how much of it you're selling. So it's, so I hate to give you that big of a price range, but it really can be that big. If you're a smaller seller smell, selling, you know, very low risk items, it could be five, six, seven hundred dollars. If you're doing private label on more expensive items, it could be a thousand to, to a couple of thousand dollars. So really All right, let's, let's try and sort of home in on a, a few examples just to give people a bit of a flavor, because as you said, yeah. that is a pretty wide range. And yeah, I understand that if you're selling knives, yeah, yeah, you're right. asking for more <laughs> trouble than if you're selling sort of cupcakes. But let's take a couple of examples of random objects yeah. I've got in front of me. I mean, this is this is very unscientific, folks, but I've got my sunglasses here. Put me on the spot here. Come on. <laughs> um, I'm not actually private labeling these. I probably bought them from a garage they're pretty cheap looking let's say i do ten thousand dollars a month of sunglasses so uh they're plastic i suppose they could break i suppose somebody could get blinded uh i'm just trying to think suddenly of all the things that could go wrong um, um roughly and let's say i've been in business for two years i haven't been sued that roughly what sort of premium would you expect to get back from your insurance? if you are just reselling those items you're looking about the minimum premium of 500 bucks Okay, let's yeah, say it's private label. Sorry, I should have said that. So let's assume yeah. that I've got my logo invisibly in the corner. It's, it's VZ sunglasses okay. and, you know, uh, limited. And I've ordered, you know, I order whatever, a thousand a month from my Chinese suppliers. Um, they're the manufacturer, but I'm the brand. Um, I kind of come as the oh, no. manufacturer from the point of view of Amazon. Um, in so, us too. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it would be from your yep. point of view. So I'm probably in the frame if something goes horribly wrong. So what sort of premium are we looking at there roughly? You're looking less than $1,000, probably seven to 800. Okay, that's for the year. For the year. Okay. So I suppose it means if I'm doing $120,000 in that example in turnover and I'm paying $1,000 in insurance is not a big percentage of my uh, overall cost. Right. Although it's something I've right. got to budget for. That, that's why I'm just trying to get a flavor for it. I mean, the thing is, if Amazon yeah. requires it of us, we've got to do it anyway. It's not a question of a decision of right. should I do this or not, but it's a question of... Um, budgeting for that now so if i have right. more product lines but my revenues kind of similar let's sit with the ten thousand for for the sake of argument for the moment let's say i have three different product lines one of which is this one and this little you know um sunglasses and then i've got um say a little plastic hairbrush and uh, i yep. don't know what else um uh, kids glasses uh, yes exactly i was gonna say candle but then i suddenly started thinking all oh, the yep. risks attached to burning things down <laughs> so let's not do that so um yeah so three fairly harmless plastic things yeah and if you stayed the same in sales it would stay the same approximately the same in cost so you still should be around seven eight hundred dollars okay so having more or product lines doesn't necessarily increase the premium it's the question of i guess the ultimate risk is determined by the riskiness of each individual product times how many products are out there in the marketplace is that is that roughly how they think <laughs> Not, not necessarily. So I can have a Amazon seller who's got 500 unrisky items and it be $700 a year, or I could have someone who has four unrisky items 
and be $700 a year. So the biggest rate factor is your gross sales. So we only add on more if the risk of the next item is higher. So we look at all of your store and we pick the highest risk and we base your sales on your highest risk. So if you've got in, in that situation, your glasses would probably be higher because they could impel somebody's eye versus a hairbrush. Is probably okay. not. So we and would what, rate what you have I ended this little, risk. this lovely little can, um, candle available now in all stores near you uh, into the <laughs> that would presumably put my so, premium up. Correct. That would take your premium up because of the risk of a fire. And these are the random objects I have in front of me here, as you yeah. can tell. <laughs> Home office, the danger of. There um, you go. Yeah. So that's a very interesting point. What you just um, said is is a small detail for an insurer, but actually it's quite profound that if we add one more risky item in then it's suddenly going to put the premium up across the board, which implies that insurers... Huge. Yeah, not huge. Okay. I suppose what it means is that the insurers generally try and be as precise as possible as pricing and risk, and therefore, if an insurance company with a lot of statistics behind them, um, very sharp people doing the underwriting, um, think that uh, it's, it's going to increase your risk of liability to have certain products in place, that might be a bit of a hint to us as sellers as well that we might just want to weigh up the risk reward for ourselves more, right. more time. Right. Interesting. I always tell my customers, they're like, well, if I get this policy going and I decide to add another product, do I need to let you know? And I said, you know, I always say, you know, if you're adding a resale item that's fairly risky, you don't have to tell me every time you change, change. But if you're going to add a private label product, absolutely. So I have customers send over like a link and say, okay, I'm thinking about this one. What do you think? And I'll say, okay, well, you know, did you think that, you know, this could cut someone, this could do this, they could do this. We're looking at probably $2,000 a year. Oh yeah. I don't want to buy that product. So I tell them kind of give me a heads up. If you want to know what the, the risk of it is first, before you go spend $30,000 on private labeling, a pair of kitchen scissors, let's talk about it first. Okay. I'm very, very to good do that advice. Too. That, that's extremely good advice. And uh, I think actually, that's that's a really great sort of reality checkpoint, actually. So thank you yeah. for that. So presumably, if people want to do that, they just kind of contact you. By yeah, email absolutely. Like that. Yep, email um, would be fine. You want to just give whatever email address you'd be happy yep. to contact them about? The email address to use is Haddon Service, H-A, D as in dog, D as in dog, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, at valdico.com. And it's V-O-L-D as in dog, I-C-O.com. Great. Well, we'll obviously get that onto your your the page. So amazingfba.com forward slash Ashlyn. But it's good to spell it out just in case somebody doesn't want to go to the yeah. the interwebs Shut and up. just want to use a pen and paper. <laughs> so um now one other question occurred to me, which is yeah, really how how accurate do you think the insurer's assessment of risk is? And it's a hell of a question. I don't know how you'd even answer that, but it just it does occur to me because the whole one of the big questions I'm always trying to think about these days is risk reward ratios in business and in life, really. So as part of that picture, do you think that the insurance premium you, you have to pay is a pretty precise reflection of the genuine risk of a product, or do you think it's kind of quite approximate? Definitely approximate. Um because these carriers are so new to assessing your risk, they don't have a whole lot of data now. I think the as the years go down and they realize how many people are moving to e-commerce, it'll get more tight. But I, I don't think the rate is is reflecting enough of what you guys should be paying if you have some higher risk items. I mean, five hundred dollars is a pretty cheap policy to to get covered for a million bucks. So I think once they start realizing, you know, more of what you guys do and the risk and more claims come up, they'll have to adjust that premium to make it worth it. Cause it's, to me, it is, it is a fairly low premium for what you guys are doing. Okay. So actually you think the insurance companies are being rather generous in their risk assessment at the moment? I'm a little biased because I'm an insurance, but yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that's not, yeah. I don't know if that makes you biased that way. Maybe that's how it works, but yeah, that's, you're the person that's going to know. So uh, that's very interesting. So I just uh, wrap up this segment and then we'll talk in the next segment about um, that infamous thing, the the email <laughs> saying your account's been suspended. We'll talk about yes. that in a sec. But if there is anyone who is already dealing with a product liability or general liability issue, the person to contact is probably CJ. I think you'd agree yeah, with that, Ashton. So absolutely. He's the CJ Rosenbaum, uh, a lawyer who specializes in 
Amazon sellers and, and only in Amazon sellers and their issues. Um, so he'd be the person to contact. So we'll put the the contact details on Ashlyn's page if you're okay with that, um, because yeah, it's going to be you know save people having to worry about where CJ's page is. So just uh, amazingfba.com forward slash Ashlyn.